Hi, I'm Tom with the list of interesting things. Over the last four years, I have been accused of cherry-picking bad things that Donald Trump did, focusing on the bad and the corrupt and losing sight of the accomplishments, focusing on the dangerous rhetoric and suggesting that many of his legislative goals that he brought up on the campaign trail weren't accomplished. Now, granted, I think that those points about Donald Trump are valid, but I also think that this is a fair criticism of me. Sometimes, in hindsight, you focus on the things that stuck out to you, and it's hard to remember what happened along the way. I don't know that that changes how Donald Trump will be viewed by history, but I digress. This video is sort of in response to that. It's a prediction. The Democratic Party, with Joe Biden at its helm, has a legislative majority in the House of Representatives and the Senate. It's not a big majority, but it is a meaningful one. President Biden can push through a lot of policy goals, not universally because of complicated Senate rules and conservative Democrats, but they can get through a lot. This video will serve as sort of a grading metric for the Biden presidency. These are things that the Biden campaign has either explicitly stated that they will do, or that their coalition has consistently pushed for that can be described as more or less positive. So today on the list of interesting political things is the 2023 midterm report card of Joe Biden. Before we get in, I'd love to remind everyone to subscribe, to stay up to date on all the most interesting things. And today in particular, I hope that you'll comment. I'm going to give my predictions, and I want to hear some of yours. Also, please bear in mind that this is domestic policy only, as that was what he ran on for the most part. There wasn't much foreign policy except immigration and climate cooperation that were touched on during the campaign. Neither he nor former President Trump had all that much... Uh, all that much to say on foreign policy over the course of the campaign season. When we go back over this two years from now, we will certainly, certainly have to use his foreign policy as a factor when we give him an overall grade. So, let's dive in. We'll start right up here with the economy. Starting with federal minimum wage. This is an interesting one. He has said, as a part of his COVID relief package, that he wants to institute a federal minimum wage. He wants to institute, in fact, a federal minimum wage of $15. Currently, unless I'm mistaken, it's seven twenty-five. I, to be frank, don't think that that's all that likely. Because of conservative Democrats and conservative Republicans, I don't think that the necessary votes are there in the Senate to get a federal minimum wage that high. I'm not certain if he can do anything with executive powers, but I think that I'm going to give that a check minus. I think that he's going to get a federal minimum wage increase. I imagine, though, it's going to be something to the tune of 9 or 10. Student debt relief is another one that I don't think that there's quite the votes for, but I know that he does have the ability to do... Uh, he does have executive power over that in some limited capacity. So I think at the very least a one-time student debt relief package as part of a COVID relief bill, I think is extremely possible. I think I'm just going to give that a straight up check. I, I think that two years from now, there will be a lot fewer people with, uh, with very high student debt. I think what he's pushing for is $40,000, I imagine that's going to come down closer to fifteen or twenty, but I think that's still very meaningful. Moving on to his one and only tax position. Well, I should say one of his only two tax positions. A tax hike on people who make $500,000 or more. A wealth tax borrowed from the esteemed, mittened Bernie Sanders. Uh, I think that this is very likely to go through. I think that, that this is not all that uh, all that controversial. I think that it's reasonably likely, and I think that this will help to keep the more conservative centrist and conservative Republican voters, I'm sorry, conservative centrist and conservative Democrat voters sort of on his side. I, I think that this will affect functionally none of the wider Biden coalition, uh, and I think that this will be what is uh, what is used to pay for things like his student debt relief and a few more that we're going to talk about down the line. Moving on to the UBI discussion. UBI, or Universal Basic Income, is a, I'm going to say, considerably 
left-wing idea relative to the current political structure. I think that it is very unlikely in any other circumstance that a, that a moderately conservative Democrat like Joe Biden would even consider putting something like this in. But at, when we jump on to health, onto healthcare, with the COVID checks, I think that people might get used to getting $600 or $1,000 or $1,500 a month. I don't know if it's going to go through, but I think that for the first time, for the first real time in national politics, that discussion is going to be had. So for economy, I think that he's going to get some of the things done that he wants to, some of the things done that he needs to. And I think, especially in the realm of minimum wage, I think that he is he's going to run into some roadblocks. For economy, I think that I am inclined to give him a C plus. Good, not great, not blowing the doors off, but nothing to complain about. Granted, I, I want everyone to remember that these are predictions. In terms of healthcare, I think that he is going to get some nice, solid positives out of COVID. I think that he is going to have, he and his, his administration, I should say, are going to have learned from the failings of the Trump administration and start rolling out COVID relief checks and heavily leaning into public funding for the vaccine rollout. I think that he is going to, uh, he, he's going to score some real meaningful points from both of those. In terms of health care reform, again, I don't think that he's going to do... He, he's going to move in the direction of Bernie Sanders. I don't think that universal health care is going to be on the table over the course of the Biden administration. But I think that it is going to be in the discussion, and that is a meaningful change. I think that I am, again, going to give that a check minus. I don't think that... Anything meaningful is going to change. I think we're just going to see some some small expansions to Obamacare, and that's really about it. I think in terms of health care, he's probably going to get a B. Moving on to social justice. Pay no attention to how ugly my Bs are. Federal police reform. I think that, again, I'm going to give this a check minus. I don't think that we are going to see the wide, sweeping police defunding uh, movement get any real ground in the next two years. But I think that because this issue has gotten so much national attention in the last year, I think that Joe Biden is very likely to follow through on his promise of convening a task force to determine what the best courses of action going forward are working with both police and the and the black lives matter movement i think that being the president that he is i think that there's a reasonable likelihood that he is the president to find some sort of compromise i actually wouldn't be surprised to see kamala harris be the head of that I don't think that this is going to solve all the problems. I think that, that it would be naive to suggest such. But I do think that this will be a step in the right direction. The Equality Act, I think that I have to give a check to. It is very difficult for, for, for any Democrat right now, and even most Republicans, to justify not moving this forward. I, I think that this is a this is reasonably likely to go through. Furthermore, I think that federal anti-lynching laws are reasonably likely to go through. Again, I really can't imagine any Democrats like I I can't imagine Joe Manchin getting uh getting heat for pushing through anti-lynching laws. And finally, in social justice. And, and this uh, ties in directly to, to elections modifications in the next few years. I think that uh, his statement that he is going to create a path to citizenship for all 11 million undocumented immigrants in the country is staggering to me. I think that it is 
uh, I think the single most progressive position that he has ever had. And uh, he said it live in a debate. He said it live on a debate stage. It's recorded and it is down in his immigration plans. I think that this is a real thing that, that he could really accomplish. Uh, I think that all of those undocumented immigrants in California and Texas and Florida and all over the country uh, will find themselves with a path to citizenship because, not, not because I think that he's going to get support for it in Congress, but because most of that most of that realm can be done through executive power. He doesn't need necessarily congressional approval to start that path for those undocumented immigrants. He can do it on his own. And I think with all of this in mind, I don't think that uh, police reform is going to be a, a home run for him, but I think that it is going to go over reasonably well, and I think he's going to be seen positively for it. I think with all that in mind, Joe Biden gets an A- minus for social justice. I, I Is he going to blow the doors off? No. But I think that this one in particular is really quite likely to go through. And if you had asked me a year ago, I never would have expected Joe Biden to come out in support of something like that. But I really think that it is. And I think that it... Uh, moves quite nicely into the first section of elections reform. Uh, the, you know, the idea of getting new and more people registered to vote uh, is close related to the idea of getting new and more people uh, who are here able to have, you know, the, the basic rights of citizens. I think that this, that elections reforms, however, he's going to perform less well in. Starting with Puerto Rican statehood. I think Puerto Rican statehood should go through without a hitch because for the first time in 60 years, there has been an unambiguous vote by Americans that they want the right to vote. I think that they're going to get it through. The only thing that you need to get to, to make a state a state is a simple majority in both houses of Congress. And I think that uh, with a democratic majority in both houses of Congress, I think that that will go through. However, the argument for D.C. statehood is somewhat more complicated. It involves the argument that um, citizens of... The, uh, the, the argument, I should say, that the federal district where the White House is, where the, where the capital is, is supposed to be separate from any states. I think that that is interesting, and I think that that muddies the water enough that that vote, if it comes to the floor, will fail by one or two Democrats flipping side. Similarly, I think that H.R. 1, uh, for those of you unfamiliar, it is the most wonderful, beautiful elections reform bill I've ever seen. I don't have time to go through it here, but I might make another video on it in the future. I think that uh, few Republicans are likely to be on board with it, and... I think that even Democrats in quite conservative districts where, where their hold on power is quite tenuous will be inclined against this. Uh, what H.R. 1 does, very broadly speaking, is uh, take small amounts of election power and nationalize it by giving the federal government a small amount of oversight into the conduct of elections on, on the state level so that uh, things like um, ballot access restrictions, things like um, uh, things like mail-in ballots, things like early voting become national laws so that all states must have early vote times. All states must have uh, must have mail-in ballot options, things like this. But I don't think that it'll go through. I also don't think that now that he has power, Chuck Schumer will be quite as excited to curtail his own power. I think that we might see that at the end of his term, but I think that some of the things that Mitch McConnell does, that some of the things that Mitch McConnell did over the past decade 
during his control of the Senate, I think that Chuck Schumer, I, I can't, I am not going to say that Chuck Schumer will do them, but even if he doesn't, I think he's going to want the threat to be able to do them as a check against future Republican presidents. And finally, I think in a similar sort of way, I don't think that the filibuster is going to get repealed in the next uh, two years. Uh, I think, again, um, Chuck Schumer is going to want that power preserved for the future. Uh, however, I think that this is somewhat more likely than the one that precedes it, uh, but I still don't think that it's going to manage to get through. And I think that overall, for elections reform, I think that the Biden administration is probably going to get a C-. minus. I think they're going to get Puerto Rican statehood, and I think that's going to be wonderful. Absolutely wonderful, but I don't think that the rest is going to go through. Now, granted, I would be ecstatic if it did, but I don't think that it's going to. Moving on, I think that in the realm of science and education, we will find Joe Biden's crown jewels. I think that it is in this section that we will find his legacy. An increase in science funding, including NASA. I, I just, I, I included NASA just because, you know, I like space. I think that I am going to have to give that one a check <sighs> minus. I think that we are going to see a lot of increased science funding. I think that he's going to put his money where his mouth is. Uh, and the statements over the past year that, that scientists should be trusted, people who know what they're talking about should be trusted, uh, I think that we are going to see uh, uh, increases to all of the science sectors with the sole exception of space travel. I unfortunately think that space travel, that, that increased funding to space travel will make the comparisons to Donald Trump a little bit too front and center with his focus on the Space Force. And I think that between he and his team, uh, they might decide to save that for a future administration, though it makes me deeply sad. Now, granted, if I can change this to a check plus, if I can change this to uh, Joe Biden has, you know, has tripled NASA's budget, I would be over the moon. But I don't think it's going to happen, at least not in the next two years. Education reforms, however, including massively increased education funding, that's supposed to say funding, just ignore that, I think that that is extremely likely to go through. I think that uh, increased education funding is an overwhelmingly popular thing. I think that uh, with his tax hikes, if they do indeed go through, there should be a meaningful amount of extra money in the budget, not an incredible amount, but enough to get more funding to education. I think that because of his science-centric, his evidence-centric, his, his fact-centric uh, campaign, I think that that is a slam dunk for him, as is the Diet Green New Deal. Now, I don't think that we're going to get a Green New Deal. I think that diet is the operative word here. I think that we are unlikely to see the $100 trillion package that is so lauded by the left and frankly lauded by myself. However, I think that he is that, that the Biden administration and the slim Democratic majorities in both houses of Congress are very likely to get some broad sweeping climate change prevention measures passed. I think that he will get done all of the things that he wants to get done. And he gave us some really wonderful specifics, including subsidies for solar companies and suites of federal cars being entirely carbon neutral by the end of his administration. That is not incredible. It's not world changing, but it's tangible. It's meaningful. It is a step in the right direction that we can grade him against. I think that we will see steps on that path taken within his first hundred days. I will. I think we will see sweeping solar subsidies. I think that we will see uh, large taxes levied against oil companies. And I think that we will see 
solar farms start cropping up all across the United States. I think that his diet Green New Deal was to the tune of $3 trillion. I think that he will get a lot of mileage out of that. And I think that that will be what his legacy ends up being. He will be the president who started taking climate change seriously. Uh, he will not be the one that fixed it. But he will be the one who took the first step. And I think that with all this in mind, he gets a solid A for science and education. Is he going to change the world? No. But I think that because of the Biden administration, the next generation will see a much higher degree of scientific literacy, and he will put us on the, the correct path toward, um, toward climate change prevention. And this one, I'm going to put a little star next to, because this, this one in particular is the one that I am most certain about, if that makes sense. I know, I'm sure, that he will make these things happen. And if we come back in two years and they haven't happened, I will, uh, I will oblige myself to score him accordingly. Now, this, of course, is not an exhaustive list. There are many, many more things that the Biden campaign has considered doing, planned to do, and likely will do. It also, of course, doesn't include scandals and faux pas and external political factors that will undoubtedly come up over the course of the next 24 months. When we come back in two years to establish how they've done, there will be plenty more to talk about. Maybe I'll even have to make another page for foreign policy or some terrible things that he's done, though we'll see. But for right now, looking to the future, if the Biden White House uses their congressional trifecta to do these things, to get these scores right here. I think if they do these and nothing else, they will get a good, solid B. Nothing incredible, but a solid presidency filled with grieving and inward reflection and a little bit, just a little bit of moving forward. Again, please remember to comment. I want to know how other people think he'll perform. What did I leave off? What did I fail to adequately consider? Discourse is the heart of democracy, so I want to hear from people who disagree with me. I also hope you'll subscribe to stay up to date on all the most interesting things. And until next time, be like the Joe Biden report card. Be honest and cautious, but be hopeful for a better future. And above all, be interesting. See you next time.